guys, it's Kevin again, finally here to review the rest of Season 5 of Better Call Saul. And holy shit, uh, it has been a while since I talked about this show. Um, right off the bat, as you guys know, uh, the last time I talked about this show, ironically, was around a time where I was also trying to catch up on it. I don't know what it is with Better Call Saul. I fell off Season 4. I caught up on Season 4 right before Season 5. And then Season 5, I'm like, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be reviewing this on a weekly basis. Reviewed the first three episodes. Watched Episode 4. And then, for some reason, just didn't continue the rest of the season. I have no idea why. I guess 2020 was just the year where I was just, like, fucked covering TV stuff, I guess. After, like, I, I was good for, like, the first few months, and then I just kind of, like, fell off entirely. And Better Call Saul is one of those shows where I'm like, when the next season comes out, I'll catch up. And, well, the next season's airing now, so, like, I probably should catch up here. Um, and it had nothing to do with, like, the quality of the show. It really was just, like... TV and things like that I just have not been uh, very good with in the past like two years but uh, this year I think I've done a, a considerable job at really like getting back into all of it and Better Call Saul was one of those shows where I'm like I need to do whatever I can to get back into this just because especially how everyone was like hyping up this season and how game changing it was and how you know people were saying it was rivaling like Breaking Bad and things like that I just I had to know what went down and what went down is uh, a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. There, there is a lot that goes down um, in this season. There is a lot to talk about here. Now, right off the bat, I'm not going to talk about what this season's about or anything like that because I already reviewed the first three episodes. I'm happy with how uh, that video turned out. So I'm just going to concentrate on episodes 4 through 10, everything that went down in those episodes, Um you know, what I thought of everything and where I ultimately think it's leading for the final season. But I will say, do not take my predictions seriously because the way this season played out was unlike anything I expected. Like, nothing that happened this season was what I expected to happen or went down in the way I expected it to happen. And like I said, there's a lot to discuss, a lot to dissect here. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna stop rambling. We're gonna go ahead and start talking about it now. So where to even begin? I mean, this is such a monumental season. I, I, even though this season is very much like setting up, you know, that final season, there is a lot that needs to happen before that. And this ends up being one of the most, probably the most impactful season yet of Better Call Saul, with its only real competition, I feel like, being season three. But we've not necessarily veered away from that, but the show is very much like transitioned away from like the Chuck era to something a lot more darker. And I mean, this is, this is way more intense. This is way more, um, you know, unpredictable in that way. And I, I think the first thing that I really want to discuss here is Howard. Um, the thing I I talked about in the first three episodes of season five is that I thought the show was doing a much better job at giving Howard a purpose. I felt like season four, they didn't really know what to do with him. With Chuck no longer in the picture, um, you know, it seemed like his plot line was just, well, I'm reeling over HHM. I'm blaming myself for everything that's happened, you know, with Chuck and now I need to like repair things so I like that this season they gave him a bit more of a purpose here we see him very early on in episode four he goes to lunch with Jimmy and he makes him a very compelling offer where he basically says look I you know mess things up with Chuck I don't want to do the same thing with you and I want you to take this job at HHM I think you have the right tools I think that you know I overlooked how how good of a you know how good of a fit you could be for it and in a past season, Jimmy would be overjoyed to take this job. Like, I think if this was, you know, season two or season, you know, even uh, season three, I feel like Jimmy would have taken this offer, you know, no question, because he wanted to be the best possible lawyer in that way. But Jimmy has fully embraced the sleaziness of Saul and just the sociopathic tendencies that at first he's just like to Howard, oh, I'll think about it, but very quickly goes into this whole sort of routine where he's playing like juvenile pranks on Howard but also like very dangerous ones he throws a bowling ball on his car nearly destroying it um he gets these two prostitutes that he's working on a commercial with to basically like accost him and try to like you know pick, pick him up and things like that I mean a lot of weird shit goes down and I think the main reason for Jimmy doing all of this is again because 
he's really just trying to like put those days behind him i feel like that's his justification where it's like that part of my life's over i don't want to think about being jimmy mcgill and he doesn't view howard in a very positive light as a result but what i really like about the season is that they really have flipped the script when it comes to howard if you remember in the first couple seasons howard was depicted as like the main villain of the show he was the one responsible for causing jimmy all this misery he wasn't really treating kim rights um, you know, he was in this position of power and he was like very demanding and things like that. So I like that slowly the show has kind of peeled back the layers of Howard and we've seen that he's actually a very genuine guy. In fact, I would go as far as to say Howard is one of the only genuine characters left in the show. He is trying to make things right. He has seen the errors of his ways. He knows that he is a very flawed person and he's trying to make it right. But Jimmy has gone so far off the deep end that Howard can't do that. And, you know, the moment where Jimmy goes up to Howard and basically just, like, laughs in his face about the job opportunity and things like that, tells him that, you know, he sees this as, like, a small... Uh, insular and insulary thing that he doesn't care about. He wants something a lot bigger. Uh, you know, basically just like makes a fool out of him. I generally felt bad for Howard because nobody should have to go through something like that. Howard was making a genuine effort to try to connect with Jimmy, someone that he hasn't really put forth as much effort into. He wanted to, you know, he he wanted to amend that, and Jimmy just wasn't interested at all. And I think the way everything went down with Howard perfectly set things in motion for the final season. I, I didn't realize how important these scenes were, were really going to be. You know, when Jimmy's throwing that bowling ball and things like that, I'm like, I don't really know where this is going. But now, understanding the true purpose of what they're really trying to do when it comes to this storyline, I thought they did a, a fantastic job at that. And like I said, Howard as a character is someone you just feel so differently about now. And I, I love the way the show ended up, the, the direction the show ended up taking him in. So with that, we obviously need to talk about Jimmy and Kim because holy shit, I mean, you want to talk about things that went in a completely different direction than I expected. Look no further. I mean, I expected for this season that, you know, after everything that Jimmy did with Kim basically realizing that she was being played, Jimmy slowly stripping away any ounce of humanity he had whatsoever, that Kim was just going to get fed up and... At first, it seems like that is where the show is going, because Kim is at a high in terms of her career this season. She has, you know, Mesa Verde, things are going really well there, but she also needs to sign this guy, Acker, and Acker is just not budging. He's not doing what, um, you know, she really wants him to, and so Jimmy tries to, like, negotiate with him, trying to manipulate him, and the final straw is when Jimmy basically makes a mockery out of uh, his commercials, exposes, he tries to expose, like, his company for all of these things that they've done, make himself look like the hero and things like that, and that episode was insane. That episode, for me, is when I realized just how incredible this season was going to be. When he's in that room, and you can just see how disgusted Acker is, how embarrassed Kim is, but also how pissed she is at Jimmy, I thought this was going to be the final straw. I thought this was the moment where Kim was just gonna leave. Like, there there was no question about it whatsoever. Kim was done with Jimmy after this moment. And that's not really what ends up happening. Because at first, yeah, she really lays it into him here. She basically says that he had no right to do this. Um, and while she understands what Jimmy was trying to do in a sense, he did not think about how this would affect her. You know, this was a client. And we know how much Kim cares about her client. We know how much, uh, you know... Mesa Verde means to her. Swicard and Coakley means a lot to her. She worked very hard to get this job opportunity, and he could have potentially, you know, ruined all of that. She was in a very good place. And the moment where, you know, she really is, like, grilling into him, talking about, you know, all the things that he's done, and really just talking about how, like, this isn't really working for me anymore. I Again, I thought she was just going to up and leave, but then she presents him with this ultimatum where that really just, like, kind of came out of nowhere, where she basically says... Either we're going to end things and, you know, leave in an amicable way, or they're going to get married, and they're going to fix whatever sort of cracks they have within their relationship, and... 
they choose to get married and that's not something that i was expecting here but this really kind of changes the whole dynamic of their relationship they go from this couple that is willing to confront their issues to this couple that pretty much is like under like at least it seems to me Kim is believing that by them getting married, this is really going to like have this, you know, they're going to have this open dialogue with each other. And it seems like they do at first. They seem to have like a very genuine sort of dialogue, but things really do get complicated once Jimmy becomes the representative for uh, Lalo. And we'll talk a lot more about that because things really do intersect this season in an amazing way, which I, I really love seeing because up to this point, you know, all the cartel stuff and the lawyers stuff have been done have been kept as like separate you know storylines and this season they really do become one and i'm going to talk about that in a little bit but going back to how this affects like jimmy and kim and everything like that you know i like that they had this honesty sort of policy but you knew that this wasn't going to turn out well because there's certain things that jimmy just can't have kim involved in she can't be involved in all this corrupt you know all this cartel stuff she can't be involved in what's going on with mike because it's going to affect her in a major way and you know again kim is someone who cares so much about you know legality and things like that and for her to go in the directions that she did it's really like heartbreaking to watch and I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit but the point is i was not at all expecting them to go in the direction they did with jimmy and kim here but i think it was a really smart one because kim isn't someone who's just going to like up and leave that's not really how kim is she's not someone that's gonna but she's also not gonna stand back and just let things play out the way that they are kim is a can doer that's how her character has always been you know when she is not achieving success her um, solution is more work, and that makes sense, cons you know, and that still um, applies to her relationship with Jimmy, where she feels like the only way they're going to be able to work things out is to say their vows to each other and basically get themselves to stay together even if this is only going to make things worse you can see that kim is making an effort to to do so and i thought where they end up going with all of that was both very shocking but also a very interesting direction for the show overall Okay, so before I talk about anything else that happens this season, of course, we have to transition to talking about Lalo and everything that went down here, which, my God, can I just say right now, I already talked about how Tony Dalton had a lot, showed a lot of uh, promise on the show. He seemed to be a very formidable foe. Um, he seemed to be this really, you know, um, sinister presence. But I was not prepared for just how utterly terrifying he was going to be here. I mean, throughout this season, you're really reminded of uh, characters like when we first saw Gus on this show. There were many moments here where I'm like, this is how people reacted when they first saw Gus. This must have been how people felt when they saw Giancarlo Esposito and just how uh, egotistical and ruthless he really was. And honestly, Lalo is on another level here. I honestly feel that it makes sense that even Gus is terrified of Lalo, knows they need to, you know, get rid of Lalo as soon as possible because what Lalo does this season is is insane. I mean, his entire mission is to burn Los Polos Hermanos to the ground. He wants nothing to do with them whatsoever. He wants Gus out of there. Um, he knows that Gus is is threatening him, and the whole war that goes down is, is so interesting to watch, but especially when you think about the Nacho and Mike of it all. Talk Talking about Mike, I really like the direction that they take him in this season, where throughout the first couple episodes, he's in this state where he's just, like, so depressed about everything, and it gets to a point where he's, like, lashing out at Kaylee, he gets into, he uh, gets mugged by, like, this gang and things like that, but eventually he has this conversation with Gus, and this kind of confirms to us why he ultimately decides to work for Gus, because we know that he's going to become this cleaner of sorts, and that's going to be, you know, his main line of work, and ultimately going to be the thing that causes his demise, you know, later on in, in Breaking Bad, um, 
But what I really thought worked here is the moment where, you know, Gus kind of, uh, you know, uh, has that conversation with him and he talks about how much Mike really likes revenge. And Mike does decide that he is going to continue working for Gus, not really because he supports Gus, not really because he likes Gus as a person, but because he feels this is what he's meant to do. He's meant to be a cleaner. He's meant to be a part of this line of work. And for the rest of the season, Mike's pretty content um, in terms of, you know, his where he is he he's in a much better place he he seems to be on better terms with his family he's pretty content when it comes to like jimmy and things like that um and it's really great to see you didn't think the show was gonna go in that direction but seeing mike kind of cope with everything that happened you know you you see it as it, it's great to see but you also re recognize that mike's kind of doing this as like a distraction he is avoiding talking about certain things but he also is able to like talk about his son freely and things like that so on one hand yeah he's content with where he is but you can also see he's still in the back of his mind i think is very despondent over what happened with uh verner um last season you know and how much he he really bonded with um with verner overall and how hard it was for him to to do what he ultimately had to do i i thought they did some really great stuff when it came to mike's character but nacho as well um is just so interesting this entire season because he's constantly caught up in the middle of everything you know on one hand you have gus basically telling him he needs to neutralize um lalo he needs to do what he can to to really like grill into him and then you have lalo who is telling nacho to like literally burn down los polos hermanos and when gus gets word of this he basically realizes he has no choice but to go along with it and burns like one in like some other one, one that doesn't mean quite as much to him and that whole scene w was so intense there were so many things that could have gone wrong there and nacho this entire season is just kind of walking on eggshells like i was waiting for that moment where nacho um ends up dying and it doesn't happen this season um he somehow makes it out and i was very surprised because i thought for sure there were multiple moments where he was gonna get caught or gus realized that he wasn't beneficial to him anymore you know we we know how gus is when it comes to his men like if you're of no use for him he's just gonna up and kill you like he he doesn't really care um and then lalo's kind of the same way if not worse in that way uh but it's the moment where he goes to his father and he basically tells him like you know you got to keep doing this they're still going to be out there you realize that's why nacho is is still doing this he knows he has people that he he needs to protect and even if it's causing him to do things that he really isn't okay with um he just has to keep on and i think all of that is very interesting to watch but it's the moment where mike uh basically decides that he is going to do something about the lalo problem and he does in fact um, you know, get Mike arrested for the death of, um, for the death, for, for the death of Frank, um, which, you know, obviously Lalo was very much responsible for, and you can see that, um, you know, you, you, you can see how upset, uh, Lalo is about this. He knows that he's been caught at this point, but what I wasn't expecting was for Jimmy to get involved here, and the way that they slowly intersected these two plots together was brilliant because they did it in such a seamless way and look i always kind of knew that the show was going to go down a darker path they always kind of hinted at it and it's not like we haven't seen the show go dark before hell i mean literally look at fucking chuck's death but i felt like it was more like melancholy than anything this is dark this is intense and there are moments this season that feel like breaking bad levels of um suspense and i thought they did such an amazing job with that while also still having its own identity it's very hard to do that but this show was able to uh perfect that overall and the idea of jimmy now having to defend lalo knowing damn well that lalo is innocent for what he did again him putting on this Saul Goodman persona, going as far as to find this this fake family of actors uh, to to pose as Lalo's family. That episode was insane. The way all of that went down, how he's sticking by Lalo throughout this entire thing, and you know Lalo basically gives him this task where he's going to have to you know it, it goes from Jimmy just having to uh, defend Lalo to Jimmy basically becoming this like 
um, it ba basically becoming one of, like, uh, you know, Lalo's, like, main assets, um, overall, where basically he's going to go on this excursion of sorts and retrieve this money that's going to help Lalo get bailed out of jail, and... Let's talk about that episode, because Bagman, I feel like, really is the episode that shifts this show from being um, Better Call Saul to really transitioning into that more Breaking Bad type era, and it does it in such an amazing way, because, you know, you start off and... Jimmy feels this is going to be a pretty simple in and out. He's going to get the money. He'll, you know, get it to Lalo, and it'll go off without a hitch. And obviously, that's not what ends up happening here. Uh, Jimmy does very much uh, get caught in a bit of a crossfire here. There are these hitmen that start shooting at him, and things are looking really bad for Jimmy. But uh, we see this uh, sniper comes out of nowhere, and it's Mike. And I feel like this is the moment that Mike and Jimmy's stories have kind of been leading up to they've been going down not necessarily similar directions but you knew at some point these two were going to converge because they haven't met up they, they meet up at least a couple times per season but this is easily the most active role mike has played in uh jimmy's story yet because basically he does save jimmy's life here but oh shit they're stuck in the desert and basically they have to you know cover up the fact that this whole thing ever happened so they decide to just abandon the vehicle they're stuck in the desert um and this causes for some really interesting moments between mike and jimmy where mike basically talks to him about the fact that you know he everyone has a reason for doing this um he's doing this for his family he always thinks about them that's always what matters and basically compares that to kim and how jimmy is you know, always doing this to make a better life for her. And you think for a moment, like, maybe Jimmy is going to listen to this advice. You have some faith that maybe Jimmy is going to turn things around. He's going to recognize the value of Kim is greater than these schemes that he's pulling up. And while that money is great, while all that success is great, Kim is what matters more to him because he could lose Kim at any second. Mike talks about how Kim is starting to get involved with this and he needs to pull her out of it. Hell, Kim literally goes to Lalo at one point to confront him about not doing this. She she doesn't like the fact that Jimmy's uh, involved with this. She wants to know his location. Lalo doesn't tell her. And, uh, you know, it gets to a point where the gunman uh, that was with Jimmy continues searching and they end up gunning him down at the end. Uh, and that was such an intense episode. I was so riveted throughout that entire thing. I didn't know what was going to happen there, but I knew that the show was going to undergo some kind of shift. And boy, does it ever. I would really signify Bagman as the episode that really takes the show uh, from this, you know, very sort of tragic, dark comedy to something a lot darker. And not to say that the show hasn't been serious up to this point, because it has. But like I said, I feel like season four was more like melancholy, where there were moments of joy, but a lot of moments of sadness. Now, the show has gone in a much more intense, uh, immediate direction, and you really do see how that changes the show a lot after this episode. But my god, Bagman, such a fantastic episode. It evoked a lot of the best moments of Breaking Bad, but still very much felt like its own thing. And it also feels like this is the episode that kind of gives us a sense of, like, how Mike and Jimmy turn out the way they are in Breaking Bad. Mike turns out the way he does because of the fact that he knows he's still doing this for his family, and that's more important to him than anything else, whereas... Jimmy, you know, he's gone down this Saul Goodman type persona because he has stripped away, you know, any ounce of uh, humanity. It seems like he's had to kind of like abandon that. And I think this episode kind of hints at that very well. But again, also kind of gives you this hope that maybe Jimmy is going to potentially turn things around, which we'll talk about how that really does go. Uh, Bad Choice Road, let's talk about this because for me, out of the entire show, my favorite episode of Better Call Saul has always been Chicanery. I think that's the episode that best defines the show the most. 
Bad Choice Road uh, really kind of gave that episode a run for its money, because my god, this episode was fucking phenomenal, and it might just be my new favorite uh, Better Call Saul episode. One of the biggest reasons, because of how well it depicts the PTSD that Jimmy is feeling throughout this episode, he wants to act like he can just kind of shake this off, and that this isn't a big deal, but you can see there's a lot that is troubling him here. He's not eating well, um... You know, certain sounds just remind him of what he really went through. Uh, when Kim's trying to, like, make orange juice for him, that triggers something within him. You know, he's straight up lying to her about what he really went through. You can see he took the exact wrong lessons, which is not shocking for Jimmy. This tends to happen a lot with him. But he took the exact wrong lessons that Mike told him and is literally, like, lying to Kim and Lalo about what really happened. And, of course, you know, it gets to a point where Kim does realize that that Jimmy is lying to her, and she seems actually kind of content with it. Um, the fact that, you know, he, he's doing that, she understands why, and I, that's what's interesting about Kim for the rest of the season, is that she's kind of just content with how things are with Jimmy, but that's when Kim makes probably the most shocking des uh, decision she's ever made in the show, and actually decides to quit uh, Schweikart and Coakley. Um, she doesn't really want to do it anymore, was giving her too much stress. She wants to focus more on pro, uh, pro bono clients, kind of more, like, you know, smaller stuff. And this is a really shocking moment, especially when you take into account how much this used to mean to Kim, how much Mesa Verde, you know, meant to her. Hell, the beginning of this season, it seemed to mean a lot to her, but it makes sense why she has kind of abandoned that. She knew that that was an obstacle in her and Jimmy's relationship, and... She wanted to kind of get out of that. She wanted to pursue pro bono. She wanted to do other things. You know, she didn't want that stress mounted onto her. And I think this moment kind of signifies that Kim's going down a much different path than we really did expect. But it's that moment with uh, Lalo where Mike calls Jimmy and, you know, Kim is at first really pissed at Jimmy for, for not understanding why she decided to do this. He's kind of like outraged about it. And, uh, you know, the moment where Lalo senses that something's off, he's in the desert, decides to go there and he sees that Jimmy's car is there. Holy shit, I did not know what was going to happen um, in this moment. I legitimately thought the worst possible things could happen here. Like, oh my god, could this be how Kim dies? Like, would I, it could happen. This is the penultimate season. We know there's one more left. They very well could kill Kim off here. And I'm, I'm glad they didn't, because I, I like where they're headed overall. Um... But just knowing how diabolical uh, Lalo is and the way that he, you know, reacts to things in, in such a, a violent manner most of the time, I really didn't know what was going to happen here. And when he shows up at Jimmy's door, my God, Tony Dalton was so terrifying in this scene. I mean, he had that charisma down perfectly, but the way it just changed on a dime, and you could tell when he's tapping at the fish and Jimmy's telling him not to do that, you know, further provoking Jimmy in that way, when he keeps telling Jimmy to tell the same story because he knows that it's bullshit, and Jimmy continues to tell it, and he adds new details every single time from that whole moment i didn't know what was going to end up happening there happening there and when kim basically just like you know grills into him tells him that this doesn't matter and that jimmy would never lie and things like that and she's actually the one to like uh de-escalate de things i was very shocked i did not think kim of all would be the one to to fix this, um, that, that Kim would be the one to, to stop something potentially really bad from, from happening here, but she is the one that, uh, tells Lalo that, you know, he needs to go, and you can see that Lalo does obey, Lalo leaves after this, and this was such a incredible moment, Rhea Seahorn in this scene, my god, I don't think she's ever been better, uh, than she has in this scene, I was so impressed by, you know, what they end up doing, where, where Kim basically tells him how ridiculous it is that he's so fixated on, on bullet holes and things like that, and he, he seems legitimately satisfied with, with where this is headed overall, but it's the moment where Jimmy tells Kim what's actually going on, 
you knew this was going to change something within Kim. Something changes after this conversation. She she no longer is um, as genuine as she once was. She she no longer is as rational about things as she was, and she doesn't seem as disturbed by Jimmy's more sleazy type of behaviors. And again, not a direction I expected this show to go in, but such a interesting one overall when you get this moment where where she no longer is taking these like sympathetic cases no this is like really serious shit and she seems like she seems like completely okay with it she's not unscathed by it. she's so like unscathed by it which is like really weird to think about when it comes to kim but again knowing what just happened and her you know not wanting to live in fear her wanting to move on from all of it it makes perfect sense for her character because that's always been kim she oh she never wants to just like sit by and let things happen and this has provoked this you know sort of nihilistic sort of view of things that kim just didn't really have before while jimmy on the other hand is very regretful at this point he he tells her that like you know they're gonna go to this hotel but he also tells her that he doesn't really think they can be together anymore he wants to keep her out of this he's very fearful of her life you know he's worried that uh no matter what happens that somehow lalo's men are going to find her and it's a really impactful moment because, again, Jimmy hasn't been putting as much emphasis into his relationship with Kim, and it feels like this kind of gave him this, this wake-up call of sorts where now he is going to try to actively look out for her. Um, you know, when he's with Mike and Mike is telling him the truth of what's going to happen with Lalo, you know, when Jimmy says, like, I'm just so worried about her, it feels super genuine. It doesn't feel like he's, you know, conning in any way. And that's it's a really great moment because Jimmy has been very deceitful this entire season. He's been festering all of these lies. Um, and to see this moment where, you know, he's generally breaking down, you know, I didn't really know what was going to happen here. But what I love even more is the idea of, you know, this entire show, we've been thinking that Jimmy is the one that is going to break bad, in a sense, that Jimmy's going to go down this really dark path, and he's going to drag Kim down with him, and, you know, it's going to ruin her life, he's going to have to leave, um, but the way things wrap up here, it doesn't really seem like that's the case. Jimmy, yeah, has gone down a dark path, but it seems like Kim is actually the one that's breaking bad. Kim is the one who is becoming a lot more uncaring. And it makes a lot of sense, actually, because Kim was the one that was super genuine throughout all this. Kim was the one who maintained her humanity. And this moment after with Lalo, it, she just doesn't really give a fuck anymore. Um, you know, she talks to Howard, and Howard basically is, you know, very shocked at the fact that she left uh, Schweikart and Coakley. He thinks that this was Jimmy's influence and that he, you know, is a dangerous, you know, dangerous man and that she needs to, like, you know, they need to get him some serious help. And to be fair, like, Howard definitely was doing the right thing here. It's just the manner in which he did it um, was definitely not the right way to go about it. And you could see why this really just kind of, like, pit, you know, really upset Kim. And, you know, you can see that he does want to try to help Jimmy. He's doing this again with a sense of care. And you feel bad for Howard because of this. But Kim isn't really in the mood to take any sort of empathy whatsoever. She, she doesn't really care about that. She sees this as him trying to, you know... Uh, take him away from Jimmy, him being this, like, you know, white knight of sorts, and she's not really here for that whatsoever, and the moment where she based, you know, they are at first jokingly saying things that they could do to Howard in terms of pranks, and then Kim devises this plan where she wants to ruin Howard's legal career, basically say that he's the one that was, you know, he was involved in all these, like, misconduct things where basically Kim and Jimmy would then get a bunch of money if this were to happen. They'd probably be able to take on these cases that Howard's involved in. HHM would pretty much burn to the ground. Uh, is a really twisted idea, but my god, does it bring this show full circle. If Kim actually goes through with this plan, which you can tell... Jimmy is not on board with this. Like, he doesn't want to do this, but he probably is going to because he just doesn't really have that energy to be like, I don't know about this. He was trying to talk her out of it, and she just kind of, like, doubled down on everything. She doubled down on their relationship. She doubled down on the, um 
you know, corruption that was going on. And now she's doubling down on this very unethical scheme where basically she's going to try to prove that Howard did something unforgivable. And it seems like that's where we're heading in season six. And if that generally is where the show is going, this is such a genius idea because it really brings the show full circle in an amazing way where for a while, it seemed like Kim was the person that held Jimmy back. She was the one who kind of like brought him back to reality. She was the one, you know, he even talks about in, in episode one where it's like she's the one who always talks him out of doing crazy things um you know who always kind of like brings out this more genuine side of him and now it's reversed where jimmy is the one who wants to make an effort to help kim he wants them to move forward from this he's very concerned about how they move forward and kim is the one who's sleazy kim is the one who's very uncaring kim doesn't really seem to have any sort of qualms whatsoever about you know fucking over other people even if it's completely um um, unjustified whatsoever she still wants to go ahead with it that is such an interesting idea and i can't wait to see where the show does go uh moving forward then i think there are so many possibilities for where they can take this uh the effect that this is going to have on their relationship this is absolutely going to be the thing that i think implodes it i think jimmy now is going to be the one to walk out i don't think it's going to be kim i think jimmy is just coming to the realization that they're not good for each other anymore they've gone down different paths jimmy's had too much misery in his life and it is completely just shifted um kim's sense of self she you know has always wanted to be like the one to like take care of people you know we saw that with like her mother um it, brilliant flashback by the way the moment where we see like her mother was like this raging alcoholic and she was trying to like help her out and things like that um but now it seems like Kim is just going down this very, like, corrupt path, and I'm very interested in seeing where the show does head with that. It's, again, it's a very unexpected direction, but I think it really does make a lot of sense given the direction that this was going. It wasn't that... Um, Jimmy was the one breaking bad and he was bringing down Kim Wither. It's that Kim was influenced by Jimmy, had a really, you know, life-threatening moment and basically just stopped caring after that. She reacted to it completely differently than you would expect her to. And because Kim has always been someone that wants to move forward, always wants to, you know, um you know, always wants to move forward, doesn't want to, like, you know, sit back and just kind of, like, you know, dwell on things. Uh, this is her way of being active in that situation, and it's it's a very scary thing to think about. It's a very heartbreaking uh, moment as well, but uh, especially the moment with, like, the finger guns at the end, where Jimmy doesn't believe, you know, he's trying to believe that she's not serious about this. He is trying to get her to come to her senses, and it just does not seem like it's going to happen, and Jimmy doesn't really seem like he's going to be able to talk her out of it or that he even is going to talk her out of it. I do see him going along with this at this point, and I don't really know what's going to happen after that, but I think it's a really great note to end uh, Season 5 on, and I'm very interested in seeing how that's all going to play out. But obviously, that's not the only thing going on here, because, my God, we got to talk about uh, the way this finale actually wrapped up, where, you know, Gus realizes what Lalo's been doing, realizes that Gus, that uh, Lalo is a direct threat to his business and wants to just bring him down. So he hires all these assassins, and they're going to make this, you know, they're, they're going to successfully, you know, kill Lalo. And it seemed like it was going to go off without a hitch at first. You know, when Nacho, you can see he's terrified he doesn't really know how this is going to play out um but he gets out there he you know summons them through the door you know they're ready to just open fire at any moment the problem is they did not anticipate how skilled uh lalo was really going to be here because he is able to complete to come out of this with almost no blood on him whatsoever he basically just takes down everyone he triumphs and it's a really shocking moment, but my God, it's an amazing one because you really, re you know, this is really when we recognize just how much of a threat uh, Lalo really is. He is unstoppable at this point. Nothing will get in his way, and him recognizing that Nacho is the one that betrayed him, and him, you know, wanting to go on this revenge path where now his his favorite cook has been uh, murdered, and you can see how much this gets to him. You know, realizing his his home, you know. Has been damaged and his life was almost um you know his his um 
his life was almost taken away. Uh, the moment where he is just walking through and you hear that like thunder in the background, kind of, you know, hinting at the the incoming storm that's brewing. Um, it's just, oh, it's such a good moment to end things on. And especially, you know, him devising this scheme where the last of the um the, the last of the hitmen that remained basically they're gonna call in and make it seem like Lalo's dead but it, it's just gonna buy him enough more time to to figure out what's going on with Nacho and to get in there when Nacho least expects it I have no idea where they are headed with season six but there's no way it's gonna go down a good path for Nacho Nacho's not making it out of uh, of next season for sure there's there's no question about it whatsoever Nacho's not making it out after this um, and I am very scared to see how all of that plays out. Again, just knowing the kind of person that Lalo is, the way he was able to so effortlessly take down all of those men uh, one by one, seem to have no sort of struggle whatsoever, um, was just insane to me. It was such a brutal sequence, um, but it is easily one of the most intense things, I think, in all of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. I love the way the entire thing played out. Uh, I can't wait to see how everything, you know, ends up going from here, and I think it really sets in what's going to be a truly... Um, just riveting uh, season six. I, I cannot wait to see how this final season plays out. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be monumental. And I think it's really going to be uh, the epic culmination that we're all kind of expecting at this point. So yeah, overall, season five was fucking amazing. Uh, this season went in just so many unexpected directions that I definitely would not have been able to have predicted um, from here on out. And like I said, I'm not really going to predict what's going to happen in season six because I'm probably going to be wrong. On. I, I don't want to say what I think is how things are going to play out. Um, I, I think what's going to happen is that Kim and Jimmy are going to devise this scheme. Jimmy's going to go along with it for a while, but it's going to get to a point where he just can't kind of do it anymore and he's going to leave. Um, and then I think that Nacho's probably going to die. I, I don't know what's going to happen to Lalo. We know that Lalo obviously isn't around, so I assume he eventually is defeated. It's just the particulars of how it's going to happen. That's not something I really want to predict. I don't really know how everything is going to play out. I do know some spoilers, unfortunately, for Season 6 that I wish I didn't, but... I don't know everything that goes down, so there's still a lot to uh, definitely look forward to. I'm very excited to see how the rest of the show does play out overall. It's unfortunate that this is the last season, but I'm happy that they're ending it on the note that they are because I think this has been a show that has just been getting better and better the more that goes along, and Season 5 really was that moment that really just solidified the show as one of the very best on TV right now. It was constantly riveting. It went in so many, like I said, it went in so many just surprising surprising directions but also very satisfying directions for the show and set in motion what is going to be such an amazing final season i can't wait to see how everything does play out here uh vince gilligan and peter gold just continue to just be geniuses uh in terms of writing the way they connected everything together did an amazing job and even the way certain scenes were shot here episode nine that like split screen we had where uh, Mike and Jimmy were recovering from what happened, cut with Kim worrying that Jimmy might be dead. Um, it's just such a great moment overall. Stuff like that. That's why I really do love this show as much as I do. I cannot wait to see the way the rest of this really does play out. Overall, this is just one of the best seasons of television that I have seen in quite a bit. It probably would be my favorite season of television in 2020 if I was doing, like, you know, best of videos. I haven't done that in years. I probably will this year because I've watched a lot more TV, uh, at least as of right now I, I will, but we'll see how the rest of the year plays out. Um, but I was just constantly riveted. I, I was so engrossed by this season, so blown away by the directions they ended up going, but also so utterly satisfied with with the direction they are taking this show overall. They have uh, very much shifted this show into something a lot darker, and I think they did it in such an effortless manner. So overall, I was very much blown away by this season, and absolutely it's going to get an A+.
All right, so with that, guys, I am officially caught up on Better Call Saul. Uh, moving forward, I will be doing weekly reviews for Season 6. I plan to stick to that. I am not going to just abandon that in the middle of the season. It's the last season. Obviously, I want to see how this all does play out. I have no idea what they're going to do, but I'm so excited to see how everything does uh, end up unraveling. But that's it for this uh, review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the season overall. Love to hear your thoughts on it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.